It's a fool that lives for success and thinks the Lord will understand. You know, to be a Christian requires living for Jesus Christ. Where does the Bible say a person can claim to be a Christian and live like the world? Is there a verse in there like that? I've read this Bible through over and over. I've never found a verse that says that. Where does the Bible say people can love the Lord and love the world at the same time and go to heaven? I've never found that. Where is the example of a person in the Bible that, that you know, that, that said they were a Christian, they got really saved, and, and then they went ahead and lived like, is it Stephen? The, is it, the, is it the, uh, the deacon Stephen? Is he the man that, that said that he, could, that he could get saved, live like the world? Not at all. He was full of the Holy Ghost, full of wisdom in the Holy Ghost. You find one example? Can you find one example in the Bible of someone who put one foot in heaven and one foot in hell and said, I'm okay? So many people are unconcerned. I, I don't know how much longer I'll be on this earth. I'd like to stay around a while if I can work for the Lord. <laughs> I'm really not much interested if I can't work for the Lord. I'd rather go on to heaven. But you know, so many people don't understand that all of life, let me underline that word, all of life, today, today, is about making preparations for eternity. Tomorrow, if God allows us to live, tomorrow will be about making preparations for eternity. That's what it's about. It's not about boats and airplanes and, and games. People act like they're going to a beach party while they're on their way to hell. Listen to Matthew 10, chapter... Chapter 10, verse 32 through 38. Whosoever there shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Now I want you to listen to these words. Deny, Jesus said. I will deny him or her. Deny! He didn't say stand over in a corner. I will deny him. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. For I, came, I, I come to set a man at variance against his father and the daughter against her mother and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. Christians, for us to follow Christ, it's going to cost us something. Salvation is free. Jesus Christ died on the cross, paid the price for my sins. But I'm going to tell you something. You can't, you can't be a, a, a coward and follow Jesus very far. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. People need to understand there is a hell. It's a fool that lives for success and thinks the Lord will understand. God's not going to understand. God's not going to understand why he's, how he could send his only begotten son into this world to go to the cross and to suffer the terrible pains and agonies of the cross physically and spiritually. And for us to simply say, okay, Lord, I don't have to give you my best. I can give you my second best, my third best, my fourth best. I don't have to surrender to you. I don't have to sacrifice for you. I can serve you without sacrifice. Where does the Bible say that? All of life. All is preparation for eternity. My last thought tonight. It's a fool. You say, how can you? You know, the Bible says, don't call a man a fool. God called this rich man a fool. 
not me. It is a fool who goes through life and does not influence people for Jesus. Verse 20 here says, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of me. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Jesus told a man that was living a careless life. He told this to a man who was living a careless life and on his way to hell. Let me tell you something. There is a hell. I'm glad there's a heaven. <laughs> Praise God there's a heaven. That's what this is about, isn't it? This business of getting saved and surrendering your life to Christ and following Him and sacrificing for Him and living, living our life and our existence here in this life and surrendering our life to Him and loving Him even more than we love fathers and mothers and more than we love wives and children and loving Jesus Christ. Isn't it all about one thing? There is a heaven. And there is a hell. The grave is not the end. And let me tell you something. God doesn't let everybody into heaven. Well, I hear that so many times. I, I've preached funerals. Someone who never left a testimony that they ever got saved. Someone who never, who never seemed, in the, I'm not their judge, okay? God's the judge. But I'm the preacher. One of them. One of many. I am a preacher. And I've heard families say, oh, oh, he suffered so much and now he's better off. No, he's not. If he's not saved, he's not better off. I don't preach that at a funeral. I'm not there to heap coals of fire on people and, and hurt them. I'm there to try to comfort them. But I'm not going to take somebody who never left a testimony and preach them into heaven either. Amen? The Bible tells us there is a hell. The most dependable book ever written tells us there is a hell. Jesus preached about hell. The most perfect man, in fact, the only perfect man who ever lived, said there is a hell. Common sense tells us there has to be a hell. If Jack the Ripper, if, Jack, if there is no hell, Jack the Ripper and all the hordes of wicked and godly people get off free. Common sense says there has to be an eternity. Common sense says there has to be a hell or there is no justice. Multitudes are living a careless life on their way to hell. Like going on vacation. They go through life like they're on vacation with so much unconcern, not realizing that all of life is about preparing for eternity. This rich man wasn't concerned about eternity. And Jesus said, Thou fool, you cannot say anything worse about anybody and to say thou fool and Jesus said to this man who was living who was a rich man the world looked up to him the people around him probably looked up to him his friends and neighbors looked up to him they, maybe he was a religious man maybe he went to synagogue I don't know but here was a man who, who, the, who people probably looked up to and Jesus evaluation of him was thou fool He was just concerned about the things of this life. Matthew 13, 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's foolish to let the things of the world be the focus of our life. People can do many things on their way to hell. 